The Trumpet Daily from Jerusalem. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Trumpet Daily. At Egyptian President Anwar Sadat's funeral in 1981, his successor, Hosni Mubarak, boldly said, I declare that we will honor all international charters, treaties, and commitments which Egypt has concluded. Our hands will not cease to push the wheel of peace in pursuance of the mission of a departed leader. Later on after that, Mubarak told a Jewish reporter to go and tell the people of Israel, don't worry. He told that reporter, you tell your nation, don't worry, Israel. Two years earlier, Anwar Sadat became the first Arab leader to officially recognize the state of Israel. It was Sadat who made the historic peace pact with Israel, but it was Hosni Mubarak primarily who honored that agreement and maintained the peace for three decades. Is it any wonder why so many Israelis held Mr. Mubarak in such high regard? Hosni Mubarak is the primary reason Israel was able to cut military spending and reduce its troop presence along the Egyptian border even as Egypt's military establishment grew to be one of the strongest in the Arab world. Of course, of course Mubarak had his flaws, like any other world leader. His administration had its share of corruption. He was an authoritarian with absolute power, but he never declared jihad against Israel or against the United States. He happened to be an authoritarian who honored Sadat's promise and maintained a cold peace with the state of Israel for 30 years. During that same time, Egypt was America's most important and strategically significant ally in all the Arab world. Yet the moment Mubarak's regime started to weaken in January of 2011, the United States pretty much hung him out to dry. If you remember, right at the start of the Arab Spring or the popular uprising back in January of last year, Mubarak agreed to step down. He was under so much pressure that he said, all right, I'll step down after seven months. And that'll give me enough time to set up an orderly transition of power so that my successor can take over and it'll be a smooth transition. But this was not acceptable to the United States. President Obama quickly responded to that plan by saying the transition must begin now. It has to happen now. And so Mubarak came out in response to that, that added pressure, and in an interview with ABC, he said, you don't understand the Egyptian culture and what would happen if I stepped down now. He feared it would result in a chaotic political scene that would enable the Muslim Brotherhood to grab hold of power. On the eve of his resignation, Mubarak reportedly said, they may be talking about democracy, but the result will be extremism and radical Islam. A few days later, President Obama told Fox News that the United States shouldn't worry about the Muslim Brotherhood he said the Brotherhood didn't have a majority of support in Egypt. That's what the U.S. President said on February 6, 2011. And the, the disgraced Egyptian President, Mubarak, just a few days earlier, said they may be talking about democracy, but the result will be extremism and radical Islam. So who was right? Here we are today, 17 months later, and Egypt's new president is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, a member named Mohamed Morsi. It's the first time an Islamist has been elected as head of state in the Arab world. Let me just repeat that. It's the first time an Islamist has been elected as head of state in the Arab world. And this stunning transformation has happened in less than a year and a half. A few weeks ago at thetrumpet.com, we told you about the Egyptian cleric, Safwat Higazi, who launched Mohamed Morsi's uh, political career. 
by telling tens of thousands of cheering Brotherhood members about what Morsi, what his presidency, would mean for Egypt and the rest of the Muslim world. The capital of the Islamic Caliphate, the capital of the United States of the Arabs, will be Jerusalem, Allah willing, Higazi screamed. He looked at this city, he pointed to this city behind me, and said this is to be the capital, the future capital, of not just Egypt, but all of the world of Islam, this Islamic Caliphate, as he said. He then led the pro-Morsi rally with this ominous chant, saying, millions of martyrs to march toward Jerusalem, millions of martyrs to march toward Jerusalem, millions of martyrs, he said, to march toward Jerusalem. Egypt's new administration wants this city, as I said, the one behind me, as its capital, as the capital of an Islamic caliphate. Now, of course, Western commentators will dismiss these rants as irrelevant rhetoric that you can expect, perhaps, during a political campaign. But they've been dead wrong about Egypt. They've been dead wrong about the Arab Spring from the very beginning. Even today, with the Muslim Brotherhood now running the show in Egypt, they refuse to accept the inescapable reality that Egypt's relationship with Israel is unraveling before our eyes and that it is rushing to join the forces of Islam. In looking at how fast these radical changes are happening, is it any wonder that Egypt's military council dissolved the parliament on the eve of the presidential elections? This just happened a week or so ago. The Muslim Brotherhood had already gained control of parliament. That happened a few months back. The Brotherhood was framing Egypt's new constitution to be patterned after Sharia law. And the Brotherhood was about to win the presidential election. And so the army was desperate. The army was desperate to do something to slow down this tidal wave, to slow down this radical transformation. And so the power struggle between the, the Brotherhood and the military, it may continue for a few more weeks or months ahead. But with the stunning victories the Brotherhood has won over the past year, it's only a matter of time before they gain enough strength to fully transform Egypt into a full-fledged, radical Islamist state. We attended a press briefing just the other day for Musab Yosef, the eldest son of one of the seven founding fathers of Hamas, the terrorist group that controls Gaza. And he said the, the Egyptian election effectively means that Hamas now controls Egypt. The southern border of Israel right now is in danger, Yusuf said, and we've witnessed the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood, not only in Egypt, we see it in Jordan, we see it coming in Syria, we see it in the Gaza Strip, in the West Bank, Tunisia, Libya, Morocco, one unity for the first time. That's what he said at a press briefing in Jerusalem. They may be talking about democracy. That's what Mubarak said on the eve of his resignation. They may be talking about democracy, but the result will be extremism and radical Islam. Mubarak knew what would happen the moment he stepped down. And if you followed us for any period of time, you'll know that we knew as well. We knew because of what God had prophesied thousands of years ago in the Holy Bible. This is why we were telling you almost 20 years ago that Egypt would eventually become an Islamist state. We said that back as early as 1993. In fact, here's a brief quote from my father, again, written in 1993, almost 20 years ago. He said, Islamic extremism is gaining power at a frightening pace in Egypt you are about to see a radical change in Egyptian politics. That prophetic insight is found in Daniel 11, where it says Egypt will not escape the wrath of the German-led Eurobeast, which will soon come against the forces of radical Islam like a whirlwind. Read that sometime. That's in Daniel 11, verses 40 through 42. And it's because of that prophecy that we have for a long time now been talking about Egypt's radical transformation 
And we've been telling you that Egypt would eventually ally itself with Iran. This is happening right now. It's happening before our eyes. We repeated this same forecast three years ago during President Obama's uh, Islamic outreach tour, if you remember, back in 2009. We told you about the president's new beginning speech in Cairo and how it signaled a dangerous turn for the United States and other Western nations. We told you how that there were Muslim Brotherhood members who were in attendance that day during President Obama's speech in Cairo. The Brotherhood was there, but guess who wasn't? Hosni Mubarak. Mubarak, the president of Egypt, he wasn't there to witness this so-called historic speech by the President of the United States, but the Muslim Brotherhood was. The Muslim Brotherhood had been trying to overthrow Mubarak's pro-American administration for years. That's what my father wrote after the President's speech in 2009, President Obama's speech in, in Cairo. And yet, here they were sitting in on that speech, invited to come, presumably, by the Obama administration, I mean, the handwriting was on the wall even then, but no one could see it. No one could see it. At the time, the Wall Street Journal was reporting that Hosni Mubarak had tightened the noose around the neck of radical Islam in Egypt. They were talking about him gaining strength, gaining power. And what were we saying? But Daniel's prophecy states that the radical terrorists are going to get the upper hand in Egypt. That's what my father wrote in 2009. He said, that is certain to happen. That's from June 22nd, 2009, three years ago. My father went on to say, no doubt the Muslim Brotherhood is going to gain control of Egypt. No doubt about it. That was three years ago. No doubt the Muslim Brotherhood is going to gain control. Now, how could we know that? How could, before us, how could Herbert W. Armstrong know that? Mr. Armstrong could see where this was all leading. He could see where it was headed long before even the trumpet came along. Mr. Armstrong, in fact, met with uh, Anwar Sadat many times and was a, a personal friend of uh, the former president. And he met with uh, President Mubarak soon after that transformation happened uh, or transfer of power happened back in 1981. Mr. Armstrong met with Mubarak on November 21st, in fact, 1981, just six weeks after Sadat's assassination. And during their 20-minute meeting, Mubarak reiterated his promise to finish what Sadat had started. We want peace, he said to Mr. Armstrong, at least to live in a very peaceful atmosphere with all of our neighbors around us. And we are going to do our best in this direction. I'm going to do the maximum. That's what he told Mr. Armstrong back in November 1981. Mr. Armstrong then praised Mubarak for his sincere attempt to continue where Sadat had left off. You're setting a wonderful example, Mr. Armstrong told Mr. Mubarak. But he then explained how utterly incapable man is at making peace. Only by the intervention of God himself, Mr. Armstrong said, would there ever be lasting peace? The Egyptian president, Mubarak, actually agreed with Mr. Armstrong. Mubarak said, I think peace, I think peace will prevail sooner or later, whether we like it or we don't like it. Yes, indeed. Even in this age of man, we are often reminded of how human nature is generally hostile to what it takes, to what it actually takes to achieve any kind of real and lasting peace. Anwar Sadat, for example, paid with his own blood for a peace agreement that Mr. Armstrong knew would be short-lived. And this is why one week after he met with Egypt's new president there in 1981, Mr. Armstrong wrote this in a letter to Plain Truth subscribers. He said, the new president President Mubarak assured me he intends to continue, to continue President Sadat's efforts for Middle East peace, and he may be sealing his own fate in doing so. What a statement. You can add that statement 
to the long list of stunning prophetic predictions Mr. Armstrong made over the course of his 50-year ministry, that statement being from 1981. For three decades, Hosni Mubarak just about single-handedly kept the forces of religious extremism at bay in Egypt. He honored the peace agreement Anwar Sadat made with Israel. And today, just as my father, just as Mr. Armstrong both warned decades ago, the forces of radicalism have taken over. And Bible prophecy shows that Egypt, the Middle East, and the whole world will be far more perilous because of it. This is Stephen Flurry for the Trumpet Daily, reporting from Jerusalem.